In the near future, most of you will be packing for those annual two weeks of fun and relaxation. But in tonight's play, our travelers start their long-anticipated vacation on a highway that leads them into the most frightening adventure of a lifetime. It's Metro Goldwyn Mayer's thrilling drama of suspense, Jeopardy. <laughs> This year, we decided to do something different on our vacation. We packed two weeks' camping equipment in the little pickup trailer and headed south into Mexico. Once you're beyond Tijuana, you begin to realize you're a long way from home. The highway settles down into a single winding tape of asphalt, and the country starts to open up. But you don't have to worry which road to take. There's only one. You see that sign, Bobby? What's it say? Mexico One. That's right. It also says Ensenada, 92 kilometers. Say, honey, how about putting the top down after we get a little further out in the country, huh? It won't blow too much. Mm, wonderful. The sun will feel good. It was a little foggy when we got to Ensenada, but even with the fog, it had something. With its quiet harbor, its little lobster boats, and the sign as you enter the town that said, Bienvenidos. That means welcome. Ensenada is a place where you fill your gas tank and check your tires. You'd better. It will be a long time before you get another place to do it. It's a good idea to look at the map, too. You see what isolation you're heading into, and you make sure you know exactly where you're going. You see, honey, now, here's where we are now, Ensenada, and down here is where we're going. Mm. How far is it to La Paz, Doug? La Paz, oh, 400 miles, I guess. Only we're not going that far. Well, according to the map, there aren't any other towns in between. Who wants towns? That's what we're getting away from, huh, Bobby? You bet, Pop. Who wants towns? Sonata. It's a road of dirt and desolation through the desert country. A road of shifting sands and bruising rock, of quail that scoot through clumps of cactus, and doves that rise in soft, whirring clouds. It was all very lonely. Beautiful, too, I suppose, and, and a little frightening. Ah, oh, yes. High adventure beckons down this road, but never again will it beckon to me. It was Doug who saw them first, the two police cars, and across the road a wooden barrier. It said, Auto. Halt. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, your pass, please. Tourista pass. Huh? Oh, uh, uh, sure. Keys to the back, please. Uh, here. Help so. Oh, this is your pass, senor. Uh, you are uh, Douglas Tilwin. That's right. Mrs. Tilwin. Uh, this is your son? Yes. You go ahead. What about the end? What are you? See, there's an Americano with his post I need you. Uh, but Doug... He must be the boss, that fellow over there. Oh. He's the captain, probably. How come you're looking in the trailer and everything? Quiet, Bobby. Why don't you go to Jacob, you can't go to the hotel. You see, bueno. You may proceed now, senor. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. That's okay. Muchas gracias, senor. What do you want, Dan? How come you stopped it? Well, Bobby, somebody probably lost a goat or a cow or something. Mexicans have a way of taking things big. Mexicans? Well, you and Bobby acted as if you hadn't seen a police car in your life. <laughs> oh, Mom, you always treat me like a kid. I wonder why. What was it, really? Who knows? Checking stolen cars, looking for contraband. What difference does it make? You could have asked, couldn't you? They never would have told me. How do you know? Four years in the Army. They never tell you. Besides, I didn't want them to go poking around in that glove compartment. Why not? Open it up, find out. Wow, Doug, what did you bring this thing for? Is it loaded? Of course not, but there's a clip of bullets in there. Not a bad thing to have when you're traveling. Oh, you think, yes. Well, it's pretty desolate country down here. You never know. I never fired at once in the Army. I thought we might pop off a tin can or two, huh, Bobby? You bet. And who knows what perils there are down here. It's okay, Helen. We'll just use it for target practice. Uh, well, just don't use me for the target. What are you smiling about? 
Nothing. Nothing at all. I love you. I love you, too, but how are you smiling? At? Oh, cut it out. Oh, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Will we get to the ocean in time for lunch? I hope so, Bobby. Now, you put on your sunglasses before you get a headache. An hour later, the car started making strange, unhappy noises. The radiator was steaming. We pulled off the road and Doug went back to the trailer for the water can. Oh, this is just fine. This is great. What's the matter? Uh, the water can is, uh, well, it's empty. Yeah, I thought I appointed you vice president in charge of water cans. Oh, Doug, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you to fill it back there. Uh-huh. Gee, Mom, you forgot? Yes, I goofed off. But it's really no problem. No, 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 of course not. We'll probably run into a nice, shiny, 50-pump gasoline station and get plenty of water. As a matter of fact, I think I see one right now. Where, Dan? Where? Pay no attention to your father, son. He's just being humorous. Dad, this is no time for jokes. Why, we might be in peril. Are we, Mom? Oh, darling. You think I'm kidding, huh? Look, straight ahead to the left. You know, there are only two persons per square mile in Baja, California, and you hit a gas station just when you need it. Well, naturally. I live right. I don't know how to describe the place. Doug called it a ranch. There were three or four shacks, each more dilapidated and weather-beaten than the other. One of the shacks seemed to be a garage. In front of it, alone and forlorn, was a rusty old gas pump. Hola! Hola! No hi, nighty a key! Hey, that's good, Dad. I just looked it up in the dictionary. Hola! Hola! Maybe nobody's here. You know something? Maybe you're right. Well, of course it works. Bring the can, Bobby. Uh, Doug, look. Ah, uh, you see someone? Oh, there's a poster on the side of that barn. Uh, Fiesta Marte 22 Agosto. Uh, that was two days ago, August the 22nd. Well, they should be back. It takes them three days to get over a fiesta. What's a fiesta? A uh, feast day. Hey, I'm starving. Well, we'll have lunch at the beach, darling. <laughs> that is, if we ever get there. Are you going to bring me that water can, amigo, remember? Huh? Oh, I'll get it, Dad. Uh, hey, Helen. Uh-huh. Look through this window. Well? They've got a lot of equipment in there, see? Tires, tubes, all sorts of things. Mm, comes a stiff breeze, the whole place will fall down. Uh, the least we can do for them is lock it up. What are you talking about? In this garage. You see the padlock on the door? They forgot to snap it. Well, then there must be someone around. If there is, let's hope he has a key. That's valuable stuff in there. Yeah, I'd better lock it. Their next callers may not be as honest as we are. There we are. Okay, Bobby, let's fill that water tank. Doug, are you sure we're on the right road? Absolutely positive. You see that rock formation up ahead, those funny-looking boulders? Well? I remember them, that's all. We're getting closer to where we're going. Well, I'm glad we're getting close to something. Hey, look at the quail. I suppose you recognize some of them, too. <laughs> yeah, it seems like only yesterday that Joe and I were scouting around here looking for the best hunting and fishing. Ah, those were the days, Bobby. What an outing that was. Tell me about it, Dad. Where ever became of Joe? Huh. He probably never survived the outing. You could have asked, couldn't you? Ask what? Directions, if we're on the right road. Ask who? We haven't seen a soul. Well, those policemen back there. Oh, them. Well, honey, why should I ask when I know? Don't be so nervous, Mom. Dad knows. I just wish the road wasn't so bumpy. You got a point there, boy, but just remember this. If the road were any better, why, this part of Mexico would be full of tourists. And what are we looking for? To have fun all by ourselves. And that is just what we're going to have. Personally, I'm very thankful for this miserable road. Doug. Uh, you still think I'm lost, huh? Okay, take a look over there. Oh, boy, the ocean. Mom, it's the ocean. Well, so it is. And to think that for a moment or two, I doubted your father. Is it? Turn off to the beach down there about three miles ahead. Another few minutes and you'll be swimming in that wonderful, cool surf and think of all that wonderful oh, privacy. It looks beautiful, Doug, but well, there's a little bay down there. Not a little. Gee, and, and a dock. How come there's a dock? Now, that's what you call a jetty, Bobby. That's where Joe and I camped, right at the base of that jetty. And let's all keep our eyes open for that road down to the beach. Doug's deserted beach was all he said it would be. But there was something about that jetty, I I didn't know what. The way it reached out into the water, gaunt and ugly at low tide. I hated that jetty the moment I saw it. 
Well, this is it. Everybody out. Boy, this city goes right out into the ocean. It looks awful rickety, huh? Doug, what was that pier for? Mom, it's a jetty. Well, whatever. Uh, they used to fish here commercially. When the war ended, they gave it up. Oh. They used a the jetty for loading. Gosh, look at the beach. I mean all the firewood. I'm vice president in charge of the fire. No. You promised. Okay, Veep. Lunch in ten minutes. I won't go far. Dad, Mom, I'm glad we're here. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we set up camp, huh? Hey, you couldn't find a more perfect spot. Now, uh, before we unpack, I think I'd better move the trailer for unloading. Well, can I wait for a moment? Yeah, sure, can we? First thing I'm going to do is take my shoes off. Oh. Oh, this sand feels wonderful. You know something, Helen? I'm glad we're here, that's for sure. Gosh, honey, I've looked forward to this for years. Just the three of us out here in the middle of nowhere. Nothing to do but eat, swim, sleep. Yeah, nothing to do but eat, swim, sleep. <laughs> You're like a kid out of school. Kid, come here. Uh, we'll, um, we'll talk about that later. I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy it here, too. You will. <laughs> I'm enjoying it more already. That sand lunch is ready. Mm, you mean I'm not dreaming? Mm. The iced tea will get warm. Let it. Well, the sun is hot. We'll get warm. Uh, where's Bobby? Oh, I don't know. Off in a cloud of firewood, I guess. You better call him. Later. No, no. Oh, I'm cute. <laughs> Come on, start calling. We told him lunch in ten minutes. He must be starving. Okay, okay, I'll call him. Machacho, venga, come here. Doug, I, I can't even see him. He can't be far. Machacho, venga! Stop being so native and get him here. Hey, Bobby, lunch. Bobby! That kid, the way he's able to disappear. Doug, look, out there on the jetty. Hmm? Bobby! Hey! Come on back here! Lunch! Bobby, come back! I just stood there, petrified. Bobby was at the very end of the jetty, high above the water. Underneath was the surf and the rocks. The sea had all but demolished the jetty. The piling shook and trembled with each wave, and the heavy timbers were battered and broken. Doug was running towards the jetty now, and I followed him. Bobby! Come back! Bobby, can you hear me? I can't hear you. Just get back there. Doug, Doug, that sign on the jetty, what does it mean, Cal... Allegro. Uh, means danger. Now, Helen, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. How did he get out there? Half the boards are missing. Bobby! Oh, Doug, he, he's trying to say something to us. No. Listen. I can't get through. I'll go out after him. Bobby, stay where you are. I'm coming out after you. Don't get excited, Bobby. I'll be right there. The jetty went out for 200 feet or more. I could hear the rotten planks creak and splinter as Doug worked his way out to Bobby. There was nothing I could do, just stand there and, and, and wait. Be careful, Pop. Most of those boards aren't any good. Now stay where you are, son. Don't move. My foot got caught. The board's broken. This other one came down on it. Yeah, now, let me take a look. Does it hurt? No. No, it doesn't hurt at all. Only this thing's too shaky, Dad. I don't think it'll hold it to yeah, a bit. You're really stuck there, aren't you? Now, look, Bobby, just relax your foot. My... Like this? Yeah, that's fine. Now, lean on me. Let's see if I can get that shoe off. Just hold on now. There we go. Gee, all I had to do was get out of my shoe. Yeah. I'm okay, Mom. We'll be back in a minute. Just be careful. We will. Gosh, why didn't I think of getting out of my shoe? Because you're just like your mom, son. You get too excited, that's why. Here, now let's put that shoe back on. We don't want you to pick up any splinters. It's on, Pop. All right. See if you can stand on it. It's fine. It doesn't hurt at all. All right, Bobby. Now, here we go. Just be careful where you walk. Take it easy, son. Nice and slow. Maybe you better go first, Pop. No, no. It's all right. I'll be right behind you. But I can't take your hand. You see, these planks might not hold the two of us together. Okay, Pop. Is he all right? He's okay. His foot just got stuck. a boy, kid. You're doing fine. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bobby was safe now. He was climbing down the jetty onto the beach. Mom! Mom, what's the matter? You look like you're sick or something. I'm okay. Honest, I am. I started to look at his foot, and then behind us came a sudden splintering crack. The boards had given way. Doug had fallen into the shallow water and pinning him down with one of the heavy pilings. Dad! Dad! It's, uh, it's all right. I'm all right. Doug, Doug, are you hurt? No, no, it, it missed me. I'm all right, Helen. Just, just the arm. But that little. beam is lying right across your leg. Yeah. Look, you see how it missed me? These rocks, the... Rock saved me, huh? How do you like this for luck? I land in the sand and the piling hits the rock. Oh, oh, get up. Well, what's the matter, Dick? Can't you get up? I, I can't move my foot. I'll get it. Oh, your, your foot seems to be caught. Uh, I must look pretty silly sitting here in the water. Good thing it's all tied, Pop. Doug. I can't seem to work my foot loose. That's ridiculous. There's Bobby and now me and... Neither of us even get scratched. How are we going to get you out? Well, it's a cinch you can't budge this piling. Hey, Bobby, Bobby, run up to the trailer, get the shovel. We just have to do a little digging, that's all. Be right like back, Pop. Doug, you're sure you're not hurt? Well, that's a strange part of it. I can't figure out why the not. The weight of this timber. The weight's all on the rock, Helen. Look, honey, don't worry about it. We just shovel out enough sand to give me room to turn my foot and I'll slip right out of well, here. I'm making a rule right now. We're keeping away from this jetty. Far away, okay? Okay. Trouble, Dad. Hey, give it to your mother, son. What can I do, Mom? Nothing, nothing. You just, just stand by. Hey, start digging, honey. Why, I'll be out of here in no time. No time at all. The water was about two feet deep. I dug out the sand as fast as I could. Doug didn't seem to be in any pain. There was a large rock in back of him. He pretended to relax against it as the wave broke over him. Can I help, Pop? I can dig better than Mom. You can take turns, Bobby, when Mom gets tired. Does it hurt? Uh, it's no worse than a kick on the shins. Doug, Doug, we're in trouble. This isn't sand. It's solid rock. All right, Helen. Now, let's rest for a moment and figure this out. You can't dig through rock. That's a cinch. And it's piling. Well, it, it, it seems to be jammed in tight between these two boulders. Question remains, how do I get my foot out of here? The jack from the car. Maybe we could lift the piling with the car jack. That's it, of course. Why didn't I think of that? I'll get it, Dad. Ah, the boy, Bobby. You know where it is? I know. Here with the car too. Where will I put it, Doug? Uh, let's see. Uh, the end down there, I guess. Take a look, Helen. Uh, can you get the jack underneath well, it? I, I think so. I'll dig as far down as I can first. It'll work, Doug. I'm sure it will. Good. Now, look, Helen, it's not hard to use. The steel rod fits into the jack, and all you have to do is turn it. Just make sure the jack is completely under the end of the piling, okay? Okay. I got it, Sam. I got it. Give it to your mother, Bobby. She knows what to do. I couldn't get the jack to work. It kept slipping out. But I knew what was wrong. It wasn't the jack. It was me. I was all unnerved. I I got hold of myself and tried again. This time the jack caught. And very slowly the piling started to move. That's it, honey. Now you've got it. Just a few notches more. I I think I can move my foot a little it's already. It's hard to see what I'm doing. The water's all muddy. You're doing fine. Just a little bit more, baby. I'm sure glad you thought of that, Jack, if you hadn't. I... Uh-oh. Helen, what, what's out of swimming? What happened? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's all right, dear. Just try it again. But the Jack's under the piling. Can you reach it? All right, go ahead. That's it. Uh, let me have it. I can't understand why it would... Helen, we'll have to think of something else that's useless. The angle pin's broken. Bobby, grab hold now. We'll pull together. Pull as hard as you can. Helen, now wait. Bobby, pull, pull. Now stop it. This isn't doing any Bobby, good. Bobby, get over on the other side and Helen, you're just wearing yourself out. We've got to get I told you to stop it. Dad. That's better. Now, look, it's not going to help getting panicky about this. Bobby, I want you to go back to the car and unhook the trailer. You think you can do that? Sure, Dad. You taught me your own, remember? Helen. What are you trembling for? I can't help it. I can't. Now, darling, do you remember that time when Bobby was two years old and he cut himself on some glass? Yes. You saved his life that day. Remember how? By keeping your head. You got a little hysterical for a while, but I finally convinced you that you had to calm down. One of us had to go for the doctor while the other one stayed with Bobby. It worked out fine, didn't it? And it's worked along the same lines today, huh? Above all, don't let yourself go to peace. I want to have to 
What do you want me to do? Well, we could use the car to pull off the piling, but we'll need a rope. But we've got a rope. The tarpaulin rope no, on no, the trailer. No, 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 that's much too light. It'll break. We've got to get a heavy rope. Doug, where? On the nearest place is that ranch where we stopped the water. They'll have rope there. I saw some in the garage. Maybe someone can come and help, too. But it's too. hours away. Just a and few. And hours back. I'll wait for oh, you. the road, you, you know I'm not a very good driver. That's for sure. Sure wish I could drive. Oh, I unhook it, Pop. Good boy. The, the tide is coming in. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Dad, the tide will float the timber off. Yeah, maybe so. That's a good thought, Bobby. But Mom had better go for the rope anyway. How much time do I have? Well, I guess the tide's been coming in now for a couple of hours. I should be okay for about four hours. You can make it fine. Bobby will wait here with me. What time is it now? Almost three o'clock. Okay. Now give me a kiss and get going. And, and don't worry. I'll, I'll get the rope. By the way, the Mexican word for rope is cuerda. Cuerda. I'll uh, ask for cuerda. Don't, don't drive too fast now and don't take any chances. I, I won't, Bobby. Now you stay here and take good care of Dad. I will. You do whatever he says. And try to stay on the right side of the road. See you later, Mom. Goodbye, dear. Now get back to Dad. Yeah, sure, Bobby. Uh, this is just like sitting in a bathtub. Only, only the water's getting higher, huh? Not much, just a little. You know, Bobby, there are lobster boats that cross this bay all the time. Now, when one comes along, maybe we can yell for help, huh? Yeah, when one comes along, I'll get it to stop. Don't Atta worry. boy. Want a cigarette? Oh, yeah, fine. Bring my lighter, too, huh? Pop, the, t- the tide won't float this piling off of you, will it? What makes you think it won't? Well, it's waterlogged, and once you told me when something gets waterlogged, it's too heavy to think. Well, we'll see. I just said that before to make mine feel better. Thanks, Bobby. Now you go get my cigarette, huh? I drove as fast as I did. It was like being in a nightmare. The holes in the road and the dust and the thought of Doug helpless in the water and every moment the tide rising higher and higher. And then ahead of me, I saw people, a group of people, a family of Mexicans. They were leaving a couple of donkeys loaded with wood. I stopped the car and ran to them. La señora, ¿qué pasa con ella? ¿Qué es lo que quiere? Uh, please, I need help. Do you speak English? No, señora. No hablamos inglés. I'm in trouble. I need help. My husband is trapped down by the water. I need a, a, a rope, a... A cuerdo, cuerdo. Cuerdo? Quiere decir cuerdo. Pues perdón, señora, pero no le entiendo. Money, money, you want money. I'll pay you a lot of money if you'll come with me. Se me quiere dar dinero, pero no sé por qué. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, please come with me, please. Then tell me where I can get a cuerdo. Cuerdo! Ay, está loca. Déjenla, vámonos. It was no use. They just stared at me, then smiled and started down the road again. I was wasting time. I went back to the car. Cuerdo, cuerdo. Pues yo no sé lo que quiere decir esta señora. Pero cuerda, cuerda. Ah, sí, cuerda. Señora, cuerda. Regrésese, regrésese. Tenemos mucha cuerda. Vete, pues, ándale. Nos va a hacer tarde. Cuerdo, cuerda. Americano turista. Mom been gone. Oh, not very long, son. Not long at all. Dad, did you really see lobster boats going by when you were here before? Yeah, sure. Lots of them. But they don't come along till pretty late in the evening after they get the catch. Do you suppose they'll see us? Well, sure they'll see us. Now, Bobby, we weren't going to worry, remember? Sure, Dad, but gee, the water's getting up to your chair. We weren't going to talk about that either, remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, how about me building a fire and making you some coffee? Fine. Would you like some? <laughs> That's the best idea yet. I got plenty of firewood, Pop. You wait, Pop. I'll make you the best cup of coffee you ever saw. Let me know if you see my little lobster, Pop. I will. You'll hear a yell like you've never heard before.
I made it. I reached the shack with a gasoline pump in a little less than two hours. It was just as we'd left it. No one, no one was there. I ran to the garage, locked, padlocked, weed locked. A dug had locked it to be helpful. I wanted to scream. I wanted to cry. There was a rake on the ground. I grabbed it and smashed the window. I climbed in. There were ropes in the garage, all sorts of ropes. I grabbed the heaviest one I could manage and climbed out the window and... You know you can get arrested doing a thing like that? Oh, you're American. You can help me. I- I'm in trouble. My husband is trapped by a timber back there on the beach. Unless we get there soon, the tide will drown him. Go on, get in the car. I'll do that. Uh, uh, we needed a rope. That's why I came back here. I-, I had to break in. You see, we've come down here on a fishing trip. And there was this jetty and my husband and he... You haven't heard a word I've said. Don't you understand? I'm in trouble. Aren't we all? Who are you? What were you doing back there? I turned around and all of a sudden there you were. Out of the nowhere into the here. You got anything to eat? I don't know. There, there may be a candy bar in the glove compartment. Well, hello, hello. Oh, this is a real break. Automatic, huh? Cartridges, too. What are you stopping for? The gun's no good unless it's loaded. Didn't you know that? Put it back. That gun belongs to my husband. I said put it back. Oh, you want to play games, huh? Okay. Oh, don't you understand? I'm in trouble. My husband... Stop is... it, lady. You'll have me crying. I'm a very sensitive man. Get out of this car. I need someone who can help me. Get out! <laughs> You're the real boss, huh? You must drive your husband nuts. Oh, please. Please, whoever you are... You, you've got to believe me. Unless I Shut can... Shut up. Just... The car You're lying. There isn't any car. There's a friend in the road. You'll see it in a minute. Police car. Change the seat, sister. If you're going to drive now, don't you try and look stupid. If I have to kill you, nobody's going to know your husband's trapped at the beach. No one. And I will kill you. Honest. Now move over. Start driving. I'll make out like I'm sleeping. My eyes be closed. My head on your shoulder. Stop it. Put my finger on the trigger on you. So you behave now. This gun's going to blow a very pretty piece of you right over the side. Now go on. Drive. What do you want? Have you seen anyone on the road, senor? Hitchhiking? A man? Uh, no. Where are you going, please? Uh, back to the beach. My boy is there now. Yes? I... Oh, we're uh, on a fishing trip. Well? Do not pick up anyone, senor. There is a dangerous criminal loose down here. Big fellow. An American. If you see anybody, of course, you will call the police. Yes. Yes, of course. Gracias. When you get back to the beach, senora, take your boy and go back into town. Good. A gun? Yes. Keep driving a while. You're doing fine. Some women who tried something just now got their brains blown out. You're smart. Honest. I like smart women. They got cat in them. Now that I didn't give you away, will you take me back to my husband? I'm going straight to La Paz nonstop. But you've got to. If you don't, he'll drown. <laughs> You're mad, the specks in your eyes, Dan. What kind of a man can let a man die? No one knows he's there. Let's just keep it a little secret, then. The least you can do is take me back there. Then you can go on. Look, I can save your husband or I can save myself. I can't do both. On a dice roll, you got to take what comes. Oh, I'll try it now. You don't have to stop. I got the wheel. Just move over there. Huh? Yeah. Oh, it's nice perfume, sister. Anyway, believe me or don't believe me, I'm sorry. You are not. You're right, I'm not. <laughs> Look at those spec stands now. Hmm? I got it, Dan. I got your call 
Dorothy. It's nice and hot. Easy now, son. The waves are getting pretty rough. I hope you like it. It sure smells good. Gosh, the waves. They break right over your head, huh, Pop? I'm in a trouble, Bobby. It's mostly spray. How's the coffee? I know you like it strong, but I put a whole handful of coffee in the pot. Oh, it's, it, it, it's very unusual. Very. Gee, thanks. You know, Bobby, Bobby, I was thinking about you while you made this coffee. I was pretty proud of you. You mean it? You mean it? That's you? Well, yes, but I also mean you. Well, Bobby, there are going to be a lot of times in your life when you have to do things you've never done before. Things that have to be done, you know what I mean? Well, no, not for sure, Dad. Well, like, like here today. Here I am in sort of a trap, son, and you're helping me. This is a problem you never faced before. There'll be others. I want you to tackle them just like you did the coffee. Well, sure, Dad. And if Mom should be late getting back here... But she won't be. No, 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 but if she is, Bobby... Look, son, what I'm trying to tell you is that I don't want you to get into a panic and run away. Your mother's going to expect to find you here when she gets back. You keep that fire going, so she'll know where to look for us. You take care of your mother, Bobby, always, you hear me? Oh, sure, Dad, but Mom's not going to do that. No, 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 of course not. Now, son, you run on back to your fire. Your coffee. I'll go warm it up. Okay, thanks. quiet. I could see he was tired. His face was drawn. He needed a shave. He wore a jacket that didn't fit and blue denim. He must have known I was studying him. He started to talk. Back there, back at the shack where you got the rope, what did you see? I said, what did you see? Nothing, nothing at all. There was a man back there. I killed him. About five minutes before you drove up. Try to run me off. I hit him with a wrench. That's your problem. You bet. <laughs> sure is. I have lots of problems. About my husband. You're uh, you're going to have to go by the road that leads to the beach. So? Well, that's where he is. Last time I was with another guy's wife, she was perfectly happy to forget all about him. If he dies, if my husband dies, I promise you one thing. I'll kill you. <laughs> It puts you in a class with 10,000 cops. They all got the same idea. It's a good idea. Shut up. That hurt, didn't it? I like being alive. I like eating, drinking. I like dice. I like talking. I like a woman, but I don't like that. Now, you better slow down. They're waiting for you up ahead. Yeah. Red light, huh? The barrier across the road. All right, you hang on, sister. We're going through. I'll slow down like we're going to stop, see? And then I'll get your hand off the ignition. Take it off. I'll kill you. But no tricks, lady. Believe me, no tricks. Step on that buck ten seconds. There may be some lead flying. Be smart. Duck your head. Okay, now here we go. <laughs> you like that, huh? Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Maybe they'll try to follow us. You ask me, they'll stay put. And the one they're on the radio right now calling another car up ahead. Boy's been looking for me for three days now. And the first... Go on. Try open the door. Go ahead. Open it and jump. The splash had beautiful build all over the road. Look for speed, baby, but not that kind. You... You've never been married, have you? Yeah. Yeah, once. That your kind of cat. She was all... It wasn't a shot. A front tire had blown out. He drove the car off the road down an embankment where we couldn't be seen. Then he got out and opened the trunk. I got a change the wheel. Where's the jack? At the beach. We tried to lift the timber off with us. Well, that's fine. It's just fine. Looks like I got to do it the hard way, huh? Don't go away. Where would I go? Yeah, that's right. I'll show you how to change a wheel without a jack. 
There was a fence near the road, the kind they used to keep cattle in. He pulled out one of the wooden posts and set it against a large, flat boulder. Then he ran the car up the post till the wheel was clear and the car dropped down on the axle. He took off his jacket. On the back of his shirt was a number, his convict's number. He dragged out the tools in the spare wheel. He worked very fast. The wheel was on now. He was starting to tighten the lugs. I was in back of him. He couldn't see me. I picked up the tire iron. I started towards him. I raised it over my head and I... Hey, no! <clears throat> Trying to kill me, huh? Yeah, you would have too, wouldn't you? Only I saw your shadow coming up and behind me. I saw your shadow in a car. Now oh, you stand over there where I can see you. You're... You're going to kill me, aren't you? Yeah. Maybe so. I guess I'll have to. I'll let you know just as soon as we're ready to roll again. <laughs> We were on the road again. I tried to figure out what was in his mind. I knew the police were closing in and that he knew it, too. Whatever was going to happen would happen soon. Every moment in the car was bringing me closer to the beach. But even if he let me go, what good was it? Without help, Doug would be dead. The tide would rise and cover him up, and he'd die. when your mother gets here. It's getting dark, Bobby. She might be alone. She's going to need somebody she can depend on. Okay, Dad. And you wait. There'll be other logs to go. Yeah, that's I'll build up the fire real good. Don't stop, Dad. Next time there'll be sure to stop. Helen, I've got maybe half an hour. Please, Helen, come. Helen, please. <laughs> Like you, you're just begging for trouble. Do you know enough to carry two spare tires? There's something I haven't told you. My boy, he, he's on the beach with his father. One good spare and a cheap retread just in he case. He was told to wait there for me. Can't you understand what it will mean if my husband drowns and the boy has to wait there for someone who isn't coming? <laughs> I knew a gas station guy used to take the nail out of a flat throw it back in the street again. It's a completely deserted section. No one knows he's there. One Sunday, he fixed seven flats off of the same... How would you feel if it were your own son? Frankly, I'm not a family man. I wondered what I would do if it ever came to something like this. I wonder if every wife wonders. Getting off the road. What's wrong? uh, You'd like me to stay on it, huh? Cops, that's what's wrong. They may be a mile away, maybe ten miles. We're gonna hole up for a while. Where? That's a good question. I don't know, but hang on. We're cutting across the desert and back of those hills. In the hills, he found the ruins of a farmhouse. The roof had caved in, but the walls were still standing. We could see the road in the distance. We saw the police car roaring by. Then he lit a cigarette and smiled. (laughs) Pretty neat, huh? I figured him out almost to the second. Yeah, pretty me. 
Where do you go from here? We're going to La Paz. What are you going to do there? One thing at a time. Can't plan too far ahead, mister. <laughs> You're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always tell myself. What are you going to do about your clothes? You left your coat back there. Those, uh, numbers on the back of your shirt. I'll find a guy someplace. We'll switch. My husband is your size. Honest. There are other things at the beach you could use. For instance? Identification papers. They'd prove you were Douglas Stillman. They'd match the registration papers on the car. Now that the other police car has gone by, you you could spare the time. <laughs> Got it all figured out, haven't you? I could go into the stores for you, buy food for you. We'd look like an ordinary couple traveling together on a fishing trip. His clothes, his identification. Everything is there on the beach. That's good perfume you got on, huh? Yes. I like cheap perfume. Don't last as long, but it hits harder. Is there anything else your husband's got I could use? I can't think of anything. I can't. What? His wife. This clothes, his papers, and his wife. I'll do anything to save my husband. Anything. Come here. I only like a woman when she smiles. Otherwise, what's the kick? How long since you've talked to a woman? Could get rough, you know. How long since you've talked to a woman? Saving your kisses for your husband, huh? I said, come here. Get back on the beach. I won't leave you, Dad. I won't. I won't. I won't. Bobby. Please don't give up, Dad. Please don't ever. Bobby. Someone's coming. The car. I told you. I told you. It's Mom. Bobby. I told you Mom would come back. Bobby, don't stay here. Somebody's with her. She's got help. We'll save you, Dad. We'll save you. Mom. Mom. Dad. Dad, I got help. Out of the water, Bobby. Quick. Take all the cards, got, and a lot of luck from all that piling. You weren't kidding, were you, lady? No. Hold on, Doug. Please, please. I'll get this rope around it. We'll try lifting it off of you. Hang on, Max. What can I do? You stay with him. I'll go tie the other end on the car. Doug, yeah. you're going to be all right, darling. Just hold on to me. Well, well, what? What's he going to do? I'm not sure, but, but he'll get through. I'll, don't worry. The, the rope. He's tying it onto the car. Won't work. The wheels have just spin in this sand. It won't work. Our blankets, put them under the wheel. The blankets, put them under the wheel. Get it, get it out You hardly tried, you just begun to try. What does he mean? He's getting out. You heard me, Max. Only first I need your wallet, bank pocket, huh? Yeah, okay. money. Money and identification. Who, who are you? What are you doing? Ask your wife. She'll tell you all about it. You can't believe him now, you can't understand. Yeah, you're a cat, all right. What do you expect me to do? The car won't pull it off. There's gotta be another way. you never give up, sweet. All right, wait a minute. A jetty there that cross next to the upper vein. Looks solid enough. Maybe it'll haul. Untie the rope from the car, bring it back to the water. I'm going up to the jetty. Now, when I tell you, throw the end of the rope up. Only hurry. I knew never what he had in mind. To lift the piling instead of trying to pull it off. He called for the rope. He threw it over the cross beam above the jetty and tied it onto the car again. Then he came down to the water with one of those heavy planks. All right, I'm shoving this plank under the piling. <laughs> now, move that rock. Move it under the plank. More! More! Okay. Now, when I step on the gas, give this plank everything you got to here. Like you're frying the lid off of a can. Have you got it? I've got it. Doug! Uh, Doug! Just do it, Ted. All right, now, the cross beam holds and the rope holds and the plank holds. Maybe you've got a chance. You won't lift it much. we got to work fast. Just get ready to yank him out. You, kid, get out of here. But I want to hear you. You heard me. Keep on running. what he said, Bobby. I'll get you out, darling. Just, just hold on a little longer. All right, are you ready? Push the wave. The next wave. Just yell when the wave breaks. It's coming now.
It's all right, darling. The door locked. Just, just stay by the fire. L- lie down by the fire. Bobby, there must be another blanket. Keep him warm, Bobby. Warm. Bobby. We got to save, Dad. We got to save. Mom, where's she going? The man. She went over there to talk to the man. Take me clothes, will you? Take whatever you want. His clothes, his gun, his papers, his door, and his car. How about you? I'll hate you every minute of the time. But I said I'd go with you, and I will. You mean it? Yes. <laughs> I thought I had a woman figured in every angle. I thought you'd come to me begging. A husband of yours, he's a lucky guy. But with that kind of luck, I could have used myself. Better wrap some more blankets around him. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, you don't want to shake hands, huh? Okay, don't shake hands. Got any idea how much gas there is, Mick? Well? The tire, the tire's flat. Spinning him in the sand like that, the tire is flat. There's a car on the highway. What are you going to do? It's slowing down. Probably they've seen our fire. The cops, they know this car. I've got to ditch this car. I've got to get rid of it. He had time. The police car was still in the distance. There were clusters of huge rocks nearby on the beach. He hid the car behind me. Then he came running back, confused, as if he didn't know what direction to take. The police were closer now, much closer. And this time I... I held out my hand. He touched it, turned, and ran... I watched him until he disappeared in the darkness, and then and two policemen came down from the road. We saw the fire, senora. Everything is all right? Yes, uh, everything is all right. Thank you. Did we not see you before? Uh, see me? Of course. This morning, the lady, the husband, and the little boy. Oh, yes, yes, near Ensenada. Oh, the American tourists who came to fish. I, I please, please, get back to town. There is a dangerous criminal loose. He may be somewhere in this neighborhood. Vamos, hombre. Estamos perdiendo el tiempo aquí. Be careful, senora. Tell your husband to take you back to town. What do you want, Mom? What did the police want? Oh, nothing, dear. Just, just to make sure that Dad was all right. It's been quite a day. Helen, the man, where did he go? I don't know, Doc. He, he was in a hurry. Gee, Mom, he sure was a swell guy. He killed, and he deserved to be killed. And yet, how will we feel when we read in the papers that he's been trapped, shot down? Yes, I, I wondered what I would do if it ever came to something like this. I wonder if... Every wife wonders. And here they are for a well-earned...